So our stay in this woodland is like a five pound donation. So, perfect. oh, that was my poles. I don't know where it's landed. Oh well, but they're doing really oh, oh, lovely work here. So it's always good to be able to support stuff like that. And then we carry on through this forest. The shop was amazing. The eco village development, that's where we camped. Yeah, the Phoenix shop. Oh my God, so much choice, especially if you're trying to be like gluten free and dairy free. Amazing. We've got a little bit of um, a road walk, about four mile road walk. I think there's gonna be some nice views I can show you just over there. We're making our way to forest. We're about um, a mile away. Carry on down this path right here. Welcome for us. We walked in this way and then right here, which is where we are, this is when the Darva Way starts. Hike number four. Have a safe trip home, bye! Um, the Darva Way should basically be pretty straight. It's similar to the Speyside Way following like the train tracks again. So I'm hoping for easy, flat, beautiful walking. Hopefully with nice weather. I mean, we can see the blue sky coming through here. I think it's time for less talk, more action, more walking. Let's go. I always think it's funny when I record those shots because obviously I've got to come back to get the camera. The Darva Way, challenge number four, this way. So, we are currently here and we're going to be following the, so this is the Darva Way here. It's obviously the purple colour. We're going to carry along here, cross over there, down here, through this woodland, past Coffin Field, along here, onto the road for a little bit. Let's go team, 9.48. Way is a trail between the towns of Granton on Spey and Forres, linking the Carrigorms National Park and Speyside Way with the Moray Coastal Trail, which I've just walked. It is a pleasant journey through woodlands and across moorland with panoramic views across the Shire counties of Inverness, Moray, Nurain, Ross, and Similar to the Space Side Way, the Darva Way also follows the train tracks. I was making such good progress, absolutely bombing it along because it's so fast and flat and it's beautiful walking. And I've just come to this. And the thing is, I just don't want to get my feet wet. I mean, I can deal with having wet feet. I dealt with it on the Outer Hebrides and the bogs. Dry feet, dry feet. Dry feet, nettles, brambles. Oh yeah, brambles, brambles, brambles. Oh, oh, that's in my bum. That's in my bum. Oh, that's on my arm. Yay. Hello, puppy. Hello. Oh. Oh my goodness! 14 miles in. In one of my previous videos, I would have talked about how I do chunking. I quite like the five mile chunks at the moment. Five miles, boom. 10 miles, boom, boom. 15 miles, boom, boom, boom. Once I get to 15 miles, that's when I reevaluate, see how I'm going, see how I'm feeling, have a check in. Do I need to eat? Do I need to drink? What's going on with my body? And then focus on the next five miles to get me to 20. 20 is always the minimum that I'm going for, especially on these next couple of days. Then I just sort of play it by ear. And if I can go further, I will. If my body's starting to hurt, and I might think, do you know what? Let's start looking for some wild camping. This is beautiful walking. Really, really enjoying it. Seven 
17.8 miles into the day, which is roughly about 11 miles on the Darva Way, 36,811 steps. Coming up to a waypoint here, waypoint number eight, Bogney Bridge. There is a permanent hill flock of about 500 grazing sheep on the moor whose primary role is to aid grouse tick reduction rather than provide sales of wheat or wool. Although in order to stabilize population, some lambs are sold off each year. Typically sheep here are washed for ticks six times during the summer, grazing period between April and October. The bridge over the burn of Newton spanned a grassy platform to enable livestock to be moved safely under the line. This burn rises in a ravine where the last wolf in Ed Killy was said to have been killed in the early 18th century. I mean, what a day. Look at the weather. Look at the skies. Look at the view. Beautiful. Waypoint number nine. Progress is being made, team. Progress is being made. Waypoint 10. Bog Causeway. The railway builders crossed a small lock and here by means of a causeway to the east lies a marshy area which in spring comes to life with bog bean and marsh sink foil. The water is over a metre deep in the middle of the bog where the thick stems of water horsetail dominate. What appears to be solid ground is in fact a quaking bog. Try it but with cautions. This small area in which ground reverts from pond to solid land demonstrates an evolutionary succession of plant life beginning with bog bean and rushes then sedges, next heather and finally pine and willow seedlings. So that's bog bean there and marsh sinker foil. Halfway hut, super cute. We've got some maps here. So we're coming up to Darva soon, which is basically where I'm hoping I can resupply my water. I'm not 100% sure how much further I'm gonna be able to get. I'll probably wild camp somewhere around here for those needing shelter on the Darva Moor. You can find out more about the Darva Way through the Darva Way Association. Look at these pictures. Ah, let's go. Look at that view. Here we are at Darva North. This is way point number 12. Basically talks a little bit about a century before the coming of the railway, squads of soldiers arrived to build all the major military roads. This road complete around 1757 was a government response to the 1745 Jacobite rebellion. From Darva, it headed northwest to serve Fort George, blah, 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 about troops and stuff. Then talk about the maintenance and the cost of the roads and having toll roads. This is Crowberry. This is a very interesting walk. I love all these sort of waypoints. Check out this mushroom. 42,674 steps and 20.7 miles. Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty strong. I think my feet are starting to throb just a little bit, but I think that's to be expected when you're carrying a pack and you've obviously walked quite a few days of big distances. person it's a uh, statue <laughs> Heather Bell cutting waypoint 14 the Darva skeleton. In 1927, a labour digging for peat on Darva Moor, six miles or so north of Grant Town, came across a buried skeleton, judged to be about 200 years old. Some pieces of clothing attached to the skull led people to speculate that it was the body of a Highland soldier returning from Culloden. News spread and the story grew to be that of the ceremonial burial of a Highland chieftain. Eventually, the bones were sent to Edinburgh for analysis. After a period of several weeks, the report came back saying that the body was that of a weak 20-year-old female, not more than four foot ten in height. Today's diggers are more intent on keeping the track as dry as possible for walkers and cyclists. You can just see a car going by as well, so you can see how close the road is. The walkers are very, very separate from the cars by a long way. Just hit 25 miles, whoop, 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 which is awesome. I'm now thinking basically, I'm gonna start looking for somewhere to camp in the next sort of mile or so. The issue I think I'm gonna have, this 
is very rocky, very solid, very difficult to get tent pegs in. Plus the main road is just up there. Is there gonna be anywhere? I don't know. I could be walking for a few more miles to find a good wild camping spot. Oh, there could be one just right here. Who knows? And we're currently here by Huntley's Cave. You know, that's only a four mile stretch. And then it's 17 miles from Granton Town to Abbeymore. So that would only be 21 miles tomorrow, which is very, very doable. I quite like to set up camp somewhere, but I can't find anywhere. Come on, flat ground. This is no good, because it's right on the path. Let's see this next bit of trees, what happens there. My brain needs some food, so I'm having some hummus with some hummus chips. I'm just gonna eat for a little bit. I've done 21 miles from Forez and Granton is three miles away. It's probably not the best camping spot in the world. It's relatively quiet. I do have 4G, yay. Uh, I'm pretty tired. I feel pretty wiped actually. So I'm probably gonna have an early night. I'm so tired. I will speak to you soon. All right, take care, lots of love, bye.